got our paints and our palettes, we've sorted out our brushes, we've even got a nicely stretched piece of paper ready to paint on. Let's have a look at colour theory. <sighs> now if you're like me, anytime anyone mentions the words colour theory, my eyes start to glaze over. So I'm going to keep this very, very quick because I know terms like the colour wheel and complementary colours and colours being opposite to each other on the colour wheel confuse a lot of people. And yet the theory in practice is actually dead easy. Right, the colour wheel appeared simply as a convenient way of explaining to people how colours related to each other, particularly the primary colours and the secondary colours. Because what we have here are three primary colours, blue, yellow and red. Now it doesn't matter what blue, yellow and red you have. If you have 20 artists in a room, you'll have 20 different opinions as to precisely which shade of red, yellow and blue is the correct one. So we'll just stick with what we have for the moment. But you can see very easily that if you mixed red and yellow together, you'd get orange. And if you mixed red and blue together, you'd get purple. And if you mix blue and yellow together, you'd get green. And these are your secondary colours because they've been mixed from two of the primaries. So there's primary colours and secondary colours sorted. OK, what's this theory about opposite to something on the colour wheel? Well, all it simply means is that red, quite literally, let's get a pencil and you can see that better. Red, quite literally, is opposite green on the colour wheel. Purple is right opposite yellow and blue is opposite orange. And that is all that is meant by colours being opposite each other on the colour wheel. Now in the same context you use the term complementary colours and this is what it means. The blue is a complementary colour of the orange because it's opposite on the colour wheel. In other words, the two other primary colours, yellow and red, to make orange, leave blue as the complementary colour. And the same goes when you look at red. The other two primaries, blue and yellow, make green, and that's the complementary colour of red. And then finally you have yellow, and where you have red and blue making purple, that's the complementary colour of yellow. It's no more complex than that. Now I've done a little chart alongside here, showing each of the primary colours with its complementary secondary colour around it. You can see here, blue is next to orange, and what happens, and it is uh, a practical thing that you need to be aware of when you're painting, is that if you place two complementary colours next to each other in your picture, they do help each other to become more vibrant and stand out more. And you'll find that very often artists will exploit the complementary colour theory in their pictures to create a greater vibrancy. Now you can see here, I accidentally dragged the wet green paint across the wet red paint. Funny thing about complementary colours is that although if you place them side by side, they make each other look vibrant and bright. If you mix them together, they dull each other down. You can see they've rubbed together a little bit and they've started to form a greeny sort of brown. And in fact, it's a far more effective way of dulling colours down with the complementary than by adding black. Because if you add black and you're not very careful, then you'll add too much and you'll just kill your colour stone dead. So this is a much more subtle and effective way of toning down. You may be able to see that the red is toned down to a maroony brown. Right, whilst we're still in close-up mode, let's just have a quick look at blacks. Because, as I've said, if you squeeze black straight out of the tube, there's a real danger for a newcomer of adding too much and spoiling your picture. And here's a way in which you can create blacks very, very credibly, and in my opinion, quite a bit better than using black straight out the tube. Here we've got ultramarine blue, light red, and raw sienna. And I've mixed them together in a pretty thick mix and here you can see it's come out as pretty well a jet black. Here's another option that you can use. This one is ultramarine blue again and burnt umber. Again, just by using two colours this time, you can get a very, very good black 
that's more than adequate for anything that you'll ever do on a painting. You can see when we grey those that black out towards the brown side of it, you can get a whole range of browny greys and obviously this side you get a range of bluey greys if you add a little bit more blue. Now what I've done here is to add more blue to the mix. So as we've greyed it out a little bit with the addition of a bit of water, you can see it's actually a bluey black. In this mix, I've added a bit more red. So you've got a bit of a, more of a red tinge to the black. And here I've done the same with raw sienna. So it's become a little bit more yellow and perhaps slightly greener sort of tinge. And that's something you simply cannot do with any black mixed straight out of the tube. So before you buy any tubes of black paint, just have a little think about that. You may save yourself some money if nothing else.